Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated, where today I'm just thrilled to death. I'm joined by actor Mark McKinnon. So, Mark, welcome. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. <laughs> yeah, so we were just talking about uh, you're in Maryland, which is about six, about six, because you're close to D.C., so it's about six hours, I think, from, uh, from where we're at uh, in West Virginia. Yes. Yeah, we're actually heading up that way on Monday. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've got, um, we're, we've got a, uh, some friends from L.A. Um, staying with us, and they're, they're moving to France. So we're taking them um, to D.C. Monday to, to oh, catch a plane. So. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. So it was more so for the airport ride. Okay, got you. <laughs> Not tight in. I don't know. Okay, got you. They, I guess they had enough. They're getting out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mark, let's, let's start this way. You know, talk a little bit about how you got into acting. What made you want to become an actor? Awesome. Yeah, it started for me back in high school. Um, I accidentally fell into it, <laughs> supporting a friend who told me to come just sit and support her at the audition. Because in high school, you know, it's a little different. You can have people oh, yeah. fit in. Um, so I went there. And at that time, I was taking a drama class as an elective. Um, and a drama teacher saw me in the waiting room. It was like, hey, why don't you audition? I'm like, no, I'm an athlete. I don't do the. I'm not going to do the whole acting thing. And she was like, no, you should do it. You should do it. And so I ended up auditioning and I booked the lead role. Um, so the first time I ever auditioned, I booked a lead role. And what made me really want to stick with it was because at that time, my school didn't have that many African-Americans uh, yeah. or Blacks in this, uh, in our place. And so what happened was when I got in, a lot of my teammates came and laughed at me. A lot of my friends came and laughed at me. <laughs> the following year, when they had the audition, so many Blacks came out. Oh, and good so for you audition and when I saw that social change I said wow like yeah that leadership step that I took that that chance that I took it really made a big difference I was like I would love to continue to do more of this and that's when I decided I said you know what? I think I want to start studying this in college when I go to college so yeah. it changed everything for me that, that was my junior year of high school um, yeah that uh, that's a that's an amazing story I'm pretty sure it wasn't that the plot for uh, Glee I'm pretty sure that was the uh it sounds, it sounds all right. It sounds about right. right. <laughs> Minus the dancing for me. I, I'm not much of a dancer, but it sounds about right. <laughs> hey, I, yeah, I don't know if they were that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the the football star that you know got talked into going into the uh, the singing group, and he didn't dance either. But they taught him, so maybe maybe they could. You could you could play lead role in your own story. Exactly. <laughs> dancing is so bad that when I uh, booked West Side Story, I booked the one role that didn't dance, which was Officer <laughs> <laughs> The only character that didn't dance, that was the role they gave me when I did that. that night. <laughs> I didn't I, even know there was a character that didn't dance in West Side Story. Yep. He came in, blew his whistle, yelled at the people, and and, and did, he did his thing and left. That's that's all I had to do. <laughs> that was it. I, I, I love the um, the fact that you you withstood some of the the uh, the kidding the you know kind of the the ridicule and actually made a difference to the point that you brought more people to the arts and and more people got involved the, the following year i mean that's that's terrific that's yes. we need more of that yes yeah especially times like now more leadership more people taking yeah. risks you know because there's opportunity for everyone there's roles for everyone um all different looks shapes sizes colors it doesn't matter like you know right. the whole point of acting is what to imitate life you know so it's really good to uh you know be a part of a change early in my career yeah yeah that's that's really uh, really terrific and so it it made such an impact on you that you gave up sports for in college or did you go ahead and play some in college well so what happened was i had a lot of uh scholarship offers right out of high school yeah. And at that time, I didn't know at first that I wanted to major in acting until I started going to some of these schools and I realized, you know what, I don't want to do any of these majors. I think I want to do theater arts. And literally a lot of the football scouts were laughing when I would show up to my um, official visits. I was like, yeah, I want to do theater arts. They'll give me a look like <laughs> that's, that's, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, no, like I, I want to study theater arts acting. And most of the schools that I was getting recruited for didn't have a theater arts program. Right. Or if they did. It was just classical training. It wasn't, you know, contemporary and classical. I wanted to do a little yeah. bit. Of both. 
Um, so I forego a lot of the offers that I was made. I ended up going to Howard University. I, they didn't give me a scholarship offer, so I ended up having to walk on the football team. And I did, and I made it. And when I went to audition for the theater arts program, when I walked in, they said, Mark, we know you're an athlete. We know you want to play football. I said, yeah, I sure do. And they said, well, we can't <laughs> let you audition unless you decide not to play football. I said, what do you mean? What? Said, you can't do both. I was like, oh, I could do both. I, I did it in high school. They was like, no, it's different. <laughs> You cannot do both. Different ball game. <laughs> I said, you know, it was like no one has ever done it in our program where they was able to be an athlete and also do the arts. I said, well, I'm going to be the first. And they said, do you want to audition today? I said, I do. And they said, well, you have to make a decision. And so I lied to their face and said, you know what? I'm going to stop playing football. And I want to audition. So I auditioned, got into the program. And sure enough, I still walked onto the football team. Um, and literally two weeks in, we had a 5 a.m. practice. You know how it goes, had the early practice. Oh, yeah. That practice goes bad. It wasn't a good practice. So what does the coach say? All right, we want you to come back later on <laughs> tonight at 6 p.m. And I already had something scheduled for the theater arts program at 6 p.m. And that was the first friction that I felt when I was like, oh. it looks like I'm going to have to make a career decision like sooner than later. And I ended up deciding to go the route of my purpose, which was going to be into the acting. Um, and I hung up my cleats, man. It was tough. I missed it. It had to be hard. It was very tough because it was such a drastic change. It wasn't like, a, 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 you know, I had weeks or months to think about. Yeah. Like I had to make an instant change, which leads me to why one of my dream roles would be to be in a sports uh, movie or TV show. I could have the best of both worlds, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We got to make that happen. Got to get <laughs> you back in there. Yeah, I would love to try. <laughs> Come in the, be in the game, coach. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was your position in football? I play wide receiver and cornerback. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. nice. Were you going to play both ways uh, in college? The, um, I had more offers to play defense because I ended up uh, at the time tying the state record for interceptions, which was 11 oh, yeah. at that time. Um, and even though I led the team in rece receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, uh, I have still got more love for my defensive play. So It's hard to find uh, defensive backs. A little, a little easier to find receivers, I think. I can find. imagine nowadays, too, now with the, the, the agility of these receivers now and their size yeah. and their height, my basketball skills and, you know, athleticism would help me be a good cornerback because I was able to jump up with those six five receivers yeah. and <laughs> hang on with them, you know. So, you know, it worked out. Yeah, I, 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 I like the fact that when you're in high school, you played uh, multiple sports because that's kind of a – it's that's kind of dying out. I, I mean, when I was growing up, Everybody played, you know, in, in every sport. It, it just worked out. But now it's, you know, they really are encouraging you to pick a sport and then you basically play it year round. Yeah, absolutely. I was kind of forced to because I started off with basketball first and our basketball coach was also the cross country coach. So my plan wasn't just <laughs> basketball and that was it. But he was like, if you want to be on my team, you have to also be in a cross country team. That's one of my requirements, you know, because yeah. so, that was right. Yeah, there. that's great. So I did he uh, uh, was he a, what did you press? Did you run a lot uh, in basketball? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A whole yeah. lot of full court press. And, you know, he was a defensive mind coach. And it worked out because me growing up watching Duke all my life since I was 12 years old, I had their philosophy and mindset. So literally I was the you know, whoever was the key player on the other team. <laughs> they called on me to guard that person. You know, that's how, so that, that how did you end up uh, as a Duke fan from Maryland? <laughs> Good question. So what happened was when we first moved, we, my family moved to Maryland uh, when I was 12 years old from New York. And when we first got to Maryland, we didn't have no cable or anything. We just had an antenna. Yeah. At the time. And the only yeah. channel that would work clearly was UPN. That's what it was called back then. <laughs> I right. remember UPN. Yeah. And UPN, for some reason, and I wasn't even big on basketball, but Duke was always on that channel. <laughs> I had nothing else to watch. And this is back when Jason Williams was playing and Chris Duhon was playing. Oh, yeah. That that year that they went to the championship as well. And that's what made me start liking watching Duke all the time. So by the time we did get cable, I was already hooked on to being a Duke fan. And so I just carried that right into my basketball career. You know, my goal was to go to Duke, but at the time I didn't realize how hard that would be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's um, a tough one. They yeah, they they get uh, kind of their pick. Oh, no, yeah. That's, absolutely. that's pretty good. And you know, you UPN, now let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Are you a, a Star Trek fan? Because if I remember right, UPN was showing Voyager or something back in the day. I, I'm not. Surprisingly, I'm not much of a sci-fi 
uh, <laughs> adequate fan. Like if, if my wife forces me to sit with her and watch them, I, yeah, I was, then you watch them. You watch it, and I love it that day. Got to love it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Chris Duhon was um, – so I graduated from Marshall University here in West oh. Virginia. Chris Duhon was our um, assistant basketball coach uh, a year or two ago. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, it's um, – so their coach, the, the basketball coach down at Marshall is um, Dan uh, D'Antoni. So it's Mike okay. D'Antoni's brother. Brother, right. And then – and he brought he brought Chris in for uh, – for a year or two so got you small world <laughs> yeah, small world man so so when you went to college were you doing was it mostly uh theater that you were were doing at that time it was all theater it was all yeah. theater. and the one <laughs> the funny part is the one on camera class that we had our senior year uh at, at howard it was like you didn't really learn how to act on camera you learned how to work the camera <laughs> you know, i never had on camera training in college like not at all yeah yeah that's interesting because that, that kind of puts you at a disadvantage once you get out there and you have to you know actually uh use the camera oh absolutely my yeah. first year in new york auditioning was terrible because in my mind i knew i had the craft i knew i had the training i had the technique but i'm going into these film and tv auditions giving them theater and yeah. at the time i didn't know i was doing wrong and i kept wondering like what's going on what's going on what's going on and then one day i came across the michael kane acting and film video on youtube so my okay me and i watched and that was my very first time ever really understanding what it means to act on camera and that changed my life so now when people used to tell me mark you need to take acting class they wasn't specific and say you need to take one camera acting class i'm like i just came from a four-year university i paid a lot of right. money, a lot of money to go through the school you know like I, I why would i pay again to go to more acting you know I, I was not smart at that time i didn't understand but that video will open my mind to take on camera acting classes yeah 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 i, I have to check that out because that's uh he's such a great actor yes so i imagine that was pretty uh pretty good advice do you remember the uh, the first role that that you got and on on camera oh, sorry on somebody. camera yeah yes it was a military role uh officer or second lieutenant fowler um that was all right role. yep it was a, a a military movie that they filmed we filmed it out in oklahoma yep they flew me out to oklahoma for it and filmed for two weeks uh, and that was my first time literally, you know, really getting to see what it's like to fully go on a journey yeah. on camera, you know, to see what that's like. And it was a great experience. Um, I love the cast, the company that was doing it was great. They called me in for so many of their other movies over the years, but like, I, like, I had a great time doing that role. Yeah. I, th I, I did, of, uh, all the actors that, that I get a chance to talk with, that seems to be kind of the, uh, the common thread is once, you know, it's, it's, it's networking, you know, it's just like any other jobs networking. Once you kind of get in with uh, a certain group of people, even if you don't necessarily get the role, if, if they kind of like you, but you weren't right for the role, they remember you and then you get, you know, calls and, and more chances. Absolutely. Yeah. And that production company was big on that. There was a couple of companies actually in the DC area that was doing that as well that, you know, I didn't have to audition anymore. At that point, it was like, are you available? I remember one project, oh, that's they, great. the week before they was going to start filming, it was like, you know, we have an actor that we wasn't able to secure. Are you available? And it was like one of my <laughs> highest paid acting jobs. And I was like, <laughs> yes. You know, imagine waking up to that call. Like, I was, I was <laughs> Yeah, I can't imagine that. I would not get that call. <laughs> 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 they, they'd have to go way down the list before they guys like all right he's, he's all, right. all that's left we're gonna have to call him <laughs> and you got you got to use the miser uh, yeah i see the miser is that does it say does it say miser yeah. so it's it's meister oh, Meister. okay i just said meisner okay i got yeah you. so it's it's um when i when i was growing up my my favorite christmas cartoon was that uh, Santa Claus comes to town. It's got the Meister Burger, Burger Meister okay. was the bad guy. And then I was a Star Trek fan. So Khan is from uh, Star Trek. So I, I started using that just when I was a kid, just goofing mm -hmm. around. And I, I was like, when we were looking for a, you know, kind of a, something to, as a, uh, as kind of the base of our company, we're like, well, nobody's going to have that name. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so we're like, oh yeah. So far, I haven't run into anybody. Wow. 
so I was I was watching, um, and it, it was kind of funny. I had, um, you know, I, I a lot of times probably you're in this situation too. My wife controls the television. You know, if I don't get there first, sometimes even when I get there first, but she, mm-hmm. so she watches a lot, uh, you know, of stuff that, that I may not normally watch, mm-hmm. but she was watching, um, this, uh, this one called the waiting room. And so I, I sat down, I was like, well, I'll try it out, sat down and stuff. You were so good in that. Wow. Thank you. You're so good. And that was it was like an emotional roller coaster. That movie uh, was brutal. I mean, in a good way. I mean, it just it was uh, uh, that was a very tough subject matter. Looked like a very difficult uh, acting role, but I mean, you handled it terrific. Thank you. No, that means a lot. Thank you. It definitely was an emotional journey um, from the moment I got the script and I saw what it was about. I knew it was going to be an emotional roller coaster. Um, you yeah. know, something that I had the opportunity to uh you know go against my fear you know a lot of times you get yeah. fearful of playing roles that you have to go that deep into an emotion uh especially with it hitting home to me with me you know i had my grandmother who died of uh of cancer as sure. well as my father so i was nervous you know especially with my training and technique you know you're taught to go to certain places mentally and emotionally right. and i was nervous to do it but i also saw the great opportunity about the message you know so that's what made me push through and, and, and do it and i'm glad i did you know, this role meant a lot to my career. It was a huge hit for my career and opened up a lot of doors that already have started to um, uh, flourish. Well, it should because it 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 really showcased you know how emotional you can be as a as an actor, which isn't easy. You know, that showing that type of vulnerability and emotion that very difficult. So I, I'm very uh, very impressed with that. It and it it was it was a nice supply surprise when I was doing my um, prep for our interview today. That's why, you know, that's the first thing I, I came across. And I was like, I've seen that. I was like, I have seen that. So I went back and, and caught a few of the clips and yeah, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. I remembered you right off. So that was a, that was a pleasant surprise. It's always nice when, when I'm starting an interview and I'm like, yes, I've seen that. You, you work. <laughs> now, thank you for watching it. Thank you for that support. I mean, it means a lot. Yeah. That's a, uh, that, that, that was a uh, really, uh, really terrific. Uh, talk a little bit about, you know, what does it take, you know, there's a difference, at least from what I've seen, there's a difference in acting when you don't really have to commit emotionally to it. But in that type of role, I mean, you really had to put yourself into the role. You know, what what was that like? How'd you get into that? And and was it easy to, to come back out of it? Um, it was tough because I had to end up pulling from something recent that has happened, you know, because I want to really show what that uh, journey looked like, you know, um, when you're dealing with a relationship and you try to be strong, even though inside you're hurting. Um, What happened about a year and a half ago, my wife was diagnosed with Bell's palsy. No, no, yeah. We we was out of town and the whole left side of her face was paralyzed. And, and, you know, it was scary, you know, and at first, you know, I tried to play the strong one, you know, it's going to be fine. I didn't think much of it because I didn't know much about it. You know, but as days went by and I saw what it was doing to her mentally, emotionally, and I saw the physical, just, you know, her face, it was like, no, this is serious. And I started to break down, but I had to continue to be strong and let her know that she's beautiful, let her know that she still can can do these things. And so when I got the script, I saw the parallel. It was exactly the same thing, but it was dealing with cancer. Um, So the moment I got it, you know, I sat down with my wife, I talked to her, I said, listen, like, I want to pull from the experience that we had with your bell spots. And she's healed from it now. Um, Good, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. you know, so to go there, it, it was it was it was really really uh, tough because I had to open up that door again, right? And and show that vulnerability. You know, and a lot of times as actors, uh, it's 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 not easy to show vulnerability. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you we yeah. try to sometimes put on whatever type of mask we want to put on to not show it. It opens up so many doors when you're able to get to a place of letting people see the raw you. To see who you right. are, your hurt, their pain, and you know, I enjoyed. It. Once I got into it, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed seeing that. Oh, I can do this. I I can take it there because it's been a while since I played an emotional role. Right. Uh, 
Yeah, the last time I did it was in theater and I didn't do theater in years. It's been like a good, almost eight years since I've done a theater show where I had to even do something like that. So I had to remind myself or test for myself. Like, can I, can I go here? Can I <laughs> Muscle this? memory. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that ending scene, that last scene, that was the most emotional one. Um, that one, I actually shocked myself um, because within the, the first take, I was already there. Yeah. And that's when I had that self-checking with myself, like, you, you, you're good, Mark. You, you got this. I just did it, you know, but then it's like, all right, cut. Let's do it again. Five, six more times. Oh, you know? yeah. It's yeah, that has to be hard. That has to be hard. to. I, I can get, like, it'd be difficult to get there, but one, I could see you getting there once, maybe even twice, but if you had to just keep keep going back to that well, that I mean, that'd, that'd be exhausting. And I learned the big lesson, you know, in that movie because because I worked so hard to get to that place. That first take, I gave it my all. I gave it everything I had. The room was crying. Everybody in the room was crying, <laughs> and everybody directing me. She was like, "Oh my god, I love this." I'm thinking, "Oh, this was one and done. Let's move on." And she's like, "All right, let's get a closer shot." <laughs> <laughs> well, you showed you can do it, so let's just keep right. going. <laughs> so basically, I didn't see all of this. Yeah, I saw all of this, and then I had to learn that lesson that you got to do more later. You know, you give it your all, nice. and that's when I had to learn to reserve it. You know, you give some, and then the closer they get in, now when I'm, you know, you get close to my eyes, you can see exactly, you know, you can see where I'm at. Where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that because I, I was, that was the next thing I was going to say is that um, in that role, you said a lot, even without speaking, you know, you, you conveyed a lot of emotion just from, uh, from your expressions and, and the way you were holding yourself. And that is, is really good. It's really nice job. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's no problem. So the other show that I've seen you in was, uh, Blue Bloods, hey. <laughs> you know, but you gotta, I mean, Tom Selleck in a police role and it's been on forever now. Forever, uh, and you've been on there several times. Yes, sir. Four times. Yeah, four episodes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, how did how did that role come about? Um, through my manager. Uh, my manager was able to give me an audition. Uh, back what's that? Twenty sixteen was the first time that I got an audition for it. I went in and worked out. Um, they called me in, and all I knew was I had that one episode. But then every year we get that call again. Mark, they want to bring you back. <laughs> And what's funny is the a role was originally written for uh, Asian American. You know, it was Officer. Oh, really? Chang. It was supposed to be Officer Chang. That was the name of the character. Yeah. Um. Some way, somehow, I still got called in, and then I'm changing the name to Officer Miller. Um. But it was like it was a really that was my first time on a major network set. Yeah. You know, it was 2016 because I did a lot of films before that, but that was t TV is it's 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 different. You know, um, so that was my first go round, and I was just honored that it kept calling me back. But that one role opened the next door to the next role. Next, you know, you know, yeah. you know once you're in the system, it's like, oh yeah, you know you, yeah. Do you get so you've you've been you know you've played a lieutenant, you've played a police officer. Do you get other roles similar to that based on what the what they've already seen you in? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, now I'm at the point in my career where I get expanded to other things now. But when I first was in New York trying to make uh, my my rounds, my manager's plan was to really fine tune my brand and my type because that's what it's all about. And that's what even what I teach to my clients. You got to know who you are. You got to use what you got to get what yeah. you. And that's exactly what they did. So I was getting a lot of SWAT, uh, FBI, military. Even when I was but, working in DC, yeah, Aaron. you played. You did. You played a SWAT leader on yep. uh, what was FBI. the show? Yeah, FBI. FBI. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty good role. I so so when I was growing up, my favorite show was SWAT. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but it, I just, I, I, well, I do know why, because at that time they came out with toys around that. And so <laughs> that was the, I had the SWAT van, you know, and the, uh, a couple of the characters. Well, cool. you know, they remade that into a movie and then they remade it into a, you know, a new TV show. Yeah. And that's the show I like. I like the new one. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's good. It's good. But yeah. So I, uh, so that I would, I'm a little jealous of that, that you can play a, a SWAT leader. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was shocked that they even gave me that because it was a, a few roles that they had me audition for, you know. So for that one to come out, you know, that meant a lot to be a leader of the SWAT team. Yeah, yeah, that's that is that's uh, does that so? Let me ask you this, just from an acting side, does that help you when you get a role that's let's say a little more important than some of the other roles? 
Does that help you going forward, even if that role doesn't necessarily have more lines than the other, uh, the you know, the other roles? You know, if you're playing a SWAT leader mm -hmm. and you've got other SWAT members, but let's say none of you had more than a, a line or no lines. Right. Does that still help you because it was a, a bigger role or, or no? It helped me in a sense of confirming going back to what it was the Brandon type, you know, because it wasn't like you're just anybody on the SWAT team. It showed leadership, you know. That's right. Like that's that's why I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to, you know, leadership. Right? You know, even when I played second lieutenant in that um, in that movie, I had a whole squ squad platoon that I had to look yeah. up. It was like, I started to realize, okay, this is how I'm viewed. I'm viewed in a leadership capacity. You know, even in my football days, I was the uh, captain of the football team, captain of the basketball team. Like that's always kind of been my life. It's like that natural born leader in a sense where I had to learn to accept it. You know, it's not like you choose it and it carried right. right over into my acting career. Yeah, that I think that's that's really neat. And that has to lead to, uh, to bigger and better things because, you know, that when when you're you're trying to find the right actor for something, I mean, you want somebody that has a presence, you know, mm -hmm. that's that can really bring something to the role. So that's that's really interesting. And I lied; I had seen you in, um, and it, it was a little smaller role, but you had a little role in uh, Gotham. Yes, that I'd forgotten about, and I, I did see that because I you know I'm nerdy, so my <laughs> son and I used to watch that. All the time. Yeah, that that was that was a cool one this year. I had so much fun shooting that. It was an overnight shoot. You know, and you go oh, into nice. the Batman world, and it's like, wow, yeah. this is just like, you know, and that was my second big network job that I did. So it was cool to be able to get stabbed and, you know, be able to <laughs> shoot a gun. And I was like, yeah, this is, if you if you ever see my acting reel, most of my work, you'll see me holding a gun. <laughs> I'm yeah. always shooting at somebody or chasing somebody down. You know, now I'm getting different stuff now, but when my career was starting, I was that aggressive attack guy, you know? Yeah, that's funny. That's So did they have to teach you to hold a gun or were you already familiar? I was already familiar because of the military movies. So those military movies, yeah. my DC days, those really positioned me to already know what to go in the audition room with. When I got to New York, I knew exactly what to do, how to make it work for an audition. Because the way you're going to hold a gun on set is going to be different from how you do it in the audition yeah. room. So once I learned that magic, it, it works every time. It worked up for a lot. I got a lot of callbacks and pins and bookings off of just really understanding and that presence that you talked about. I uh, I interviewed an actress a while back, and and she was she was in a role where she she played a um, a police detective, wow. and she held the gun with her uh, left hand cupped underneath her her, you know, the palm of her right hand, which I guess is, that's a no-no. You're not <laughs> supposed to do that. Right. Well, because she did that, and then it was a series, so her character kept making appearances, so then every time she pulled her weapon, she had to hold it the same way. Same way, yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Got she was just doing it wrong the whole time, so yeah, I get, that's an important skill if you want to oh, be authentic. <laughs> a lot of times they're good with having somebody who either was a real police officer or in the military they're on set to like you know all the military movies i went through boot camp they made me like really learn and it got me in trouble yeah. sometimes because a lot of people say i look military so when i was on these military bases i got chewed out by real military people because my <laughs> strings wasn't tucked in or i didn't have my uh, my, my cap on outside and they thought I was really in the military because you're in real authentic uniform. And so uh, that's hilarious. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you better straighten up. <laughs> straighten up bro. I mean, this one guy was driving down the street in his truck and he saw me somehow across the field. You turned around, drove over and started chewing me out and called me by my name. And I was like, somebody had to run over and say he's just an actor. He's like, what do you mean? He was so mad. He's like, you need to have signs or something. Let us know. Like, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's that's good. awesome. <laughs> and good for him to be able to see that far. <laughs> he was ready. He thought no, they'd be on point. He was on point. <laughs> so I was looking. Did I explain this assistant to to Snoop Dogg or Snoop Lion that that you played? I saw that and I was like, what? <laughs> explain that one to me. Yeah. So oh wow, you're taking it back. That was ooh, I think like 2013. Um, it was my first time getting a soap opera audition. And when I auditioned, originally I auditioned as an under five line. Uh, yeah. I got to set and I refilmed all those lines. The way they cut it, they cut all my lines out. They, they cut <laughs> everything out. But hey, I still got paid for all five lines. But 
Um, the whole point was that that was me playing his assistant on that show because he had a guest star appearance on there on a couple of episodes. So I just yeah. was when I came in in the system. So that was that was my very first first time uh, being able to work with a celebrity in an acting standpoint, you know, on TV. Yeah, that's kind of a neat first time. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I get. I think he was he was going by Lion back then, right? He's, he's yep, back he's to like, dog yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yep. He went back. He did go there. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, he went back. Yeah, but he was soup lying and. I always forget that one because they cut my lines. I'm like, well, I guess it's not really a co-star anymore. You know, <laughs> I'm not, I can't say co-star and there's no evidence of me physically speaking. Uh, so I always consider Blue Bloods that first credit. But yeah, One Life to Live, that actually was the first co-star that I ever. I That's ever awesome. Did. Yeah. And that has to be kind of, I mean, the experience would be great regardless, but that has to be a little bit painful when you, when you, you think you're getting some lines and then they get. Did cut. you know before it aired? Did you know that they got cut? I didn't. I didn't. And so yeah. Did I, you bring everybody? See, I would. I'd bring everybody. I'd be like, Mom, you got to watch, or you know, call your cousins. Everybody's sitting around waiting on it. it at that time, it, it didn't because this is when I was actually living in New York, and I was living there, um, yeah. you know, kind of alone. So I didn't really have family around to really. Right. Right. That may have been a good thing. But yeah, it worked. It worked itself out because I. Have <laughs> <laughs> they do that and they do a big post and blast and family come around and then <laughs> they end up being cut and it's like uh those are always are tough to consult yeah. after like what do you yeah say? acting is such a, a difficult profession I, I people don't think that it is but it's it's brutal oh yeah oh it's yeah exactly. yeah it's tough i saw that uh snoop dog he was doing commentary at the um uh, Mike Tyson fight the other night. Yes, <laughs> that was hilarious. I don't know how he got that gig, but he had it, and he did him uh, exactly who we thought he would be. Yeah, he was pretty funny when he was talking about them, uh, uh, reminding him of his uncles fighting at their family barbecue. Uh, yeah. That was funny stuff. <laughs> they said that on air it was funny. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. So, any uh, any plans to eventually go back? To, uh, to theater? I thought about it. I actually had that conversation with my manager a few months ago um, because I, I was starting to miss theater. Yeah. Um, but the biggest reason why I decided not to move forward is because of the time commitment of theater. You know, yeah. one of the things I was, that was one of the reasons why I transitioned in the first place was because with me running an acting school and with me also still trying to build my film and TV career, you know, when you commit to a theater show, that's that's your life for, you know, a couple right. of months, you know. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that if I was going to do it, that I would be OK with putting, you know, what I do with my acting studio on pause and make sure that I was OK with right. turning down a movie or a TV show. Because I have friends from Howard, you know, that they're in that situation where yeah. they committed and it's Broadway, too. They committed to a Broadway show. So you got all the money in the world. But yet they feel hurt artistically because they had to turn down a film, but a passion project that they wanted to be a part yeah. of. And yeah, you're locked in at that point. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's the same for series regulars. You know, I have friends who are series regulars on TV shows. And so we, you know, we fight for that, oh, life changing, career changing, financial changing situation. Right. But there's a negative side to that too, you know, because that they own you for seven years. A lot of people don't know that. When you commit to a series regular role, you have to commit for seven years. You, they own you for seven years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so, I guess that's it's seven years. That's kind of like the um, in order for it to get to syndications mm -hmm. type of thing, right? And if it renews. So, just, I mean, most shows don't even make it to seven years, but they want to know, okay, if we do keep going for seven years, that we got you. You ain't no picking up something else, you know, and can't continue. Yeah. Unless we yeah, that, well, that, that has to be rough. So you would actually have to get permission to do another role you know, even if it's if it's in your downtime. And it's not, yeah, and, and that's the thing, especially if you're series regular, you don't have that much downtime. You know, that's right. not months out the year that you're filming four or five days a week most times, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I never thought of that. But yeah, if you're on if you go on a series, the assumption is it's not just going to be a one year and done. Yeah. Yep. It's not. I have a friend who just booked his first series regular. Uh, role, you know, and they already got him slated for two years, you know, as far as what his character could be, but he still had to sign the seven year uh, hold, but they already know they're going to have him at least two years. Yeah. So wow. So he's set, you know, because again, series regular, big contract, everything is good, but, uh, you know, my uh, friends always tell me, you know, make sure if you ever take on a series regular role, that it's something that you wouldn't mind playing for seven years. 
because that is the only yeah. character for the most part that you will be doing <laughs> for seven years. Yeah, that's wow. Yeah, I, hadn't, I guess I never thought of that, but yeah, it makes sense. I mean, when when you see somebody on a show, especially if it's successful enough to be on for a few years, you don't see them anywhere else. You don't. You don't. Yeah. And you also, your reputation is locked in. You know, how many times we see somebody who's a series regular on one show, you see him in something else, but you're like, oh, that's the guy from, and you mentioned yeah. that. So, <laughs> I mean, you can see him every week or now that you binge watching, you've seen him for multiple hours a day. Your, yeah. your brain is locked into this is who they are. Yeah, for sure. It, it is difficult, especially if you really, you know, kind of fall for a character. Mm -hmm. It's tough seeing him in something else. It takes a little, you got to kind of work through that because it you, you do, you only see him that one way. Absolutely. Like one of my favorite actors is Omari Harworth. You know, he did power yeah. for the last six, seven years, you know, so that's what we know him as, you know, and that's what really, <laughs> and you know, he had roles before that, that role is what really made him who he is yeah. today. And so now you've seen him in something else, you still call him Ghost, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> like, it's, 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 do you um, do you sing? Do you do no. musicals? No? I don't. No I did, musicals. High school days, I did. And then something happened. You know, when I got to college, my voice got a little deeper. Something happened where it just yeah, kind of... Yeah, it was done. <laughs> so they say, do you sing? I, I'm quick to say no. <laughs> Think about it. I don't try. Nope, I do not. Yeah, say. see, that's that would be me too. I I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk. It. You know, some people would be like, "Yeah, I'll sing." I'll sing you know, because and just take a shot. I know you got to know yourself. No, <laughs> now, I tried to rap one time. It was a role. It was a, a hip hop movie that I had to rap for, and I didn't do too well. I was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna do too well. <laughs> I thought I knew music, but not to play a role. Yeah, that's, that's that stuff's not easy. It's not. <laughs> that's not easy. So. Is there a genre that you haven't done that you would like to do? That's a good, oh, wow. Comedy. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the one I was going to bring up because it, it seems like you could uh, do pretty well. See, that's what you need. You need a comedy where you play an ex-sports you know, star or something. I don't know. You could be a coach, something. Right. But it needs to be, I think a comedy is what we need. Now, and, and the, you know what's funny is like it's not that I never ran from comedy so over the years I've been technically a part of two showcases one was the NBC showcase I made it through five rounds of that where I made it to the top 50 for the NBC showcase and the oh, whole wow. thing is comedy every round was comedy yeah. so when I got that far I was like wait I, I can do comedy like, I got yeah that that's pretty good but then the same thing happened this year with ABC where I actually made it to the ABC showcase and 90% of the process was comedy. It was comedic roles. And so I'm like, maybe that is a field that I should explore even more yeah. because I'm getting this far on network showcases for being comedic. I'm like, that may be a field or area that I really could blossom in, you know? So my team, we really coming up with a good plan, you know, now that, you know, cause the showcase it actually airs tomorrow. Uh, well, not airs, but it premieres tomorrow. Um, you know, after that, we'll, we're gonna really try to push me for some comedic pilots during pilot season. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think you should. I, I think that uh, uh, would. I think you'd be terrific. And okay. explain what the, explain what the the showcase is for the, for the networks. What what is, is that something that actually airs where people can watch it? No, it doesn't. So it doesn't air. So I, I didn't mean to say air. Uh, so what happens is normally every year um, they select the top twelve actors. So for instance, for the ABC showcase this year, over fifteen thousand actors submitted to be a part of the showcase. Oh wow. And they select, ended up selecting 16 this year, but for the first time ever, it's going to be virtual because of COVID. You know, so normally they have people come to a theater where yeah. literally agents, managers, the network executives, cast and directors, yeah. and they all come in from New York and they all come in and they literally watch these actors be highlighted and showcase their skill, personalities, they do interviews. And so you walk away with the uh, mentorship from an ABC executive, you walk away right possibly with a manager or an agent, you know, who wants to make you an offer, you know, and then policies that come around these people who show, saw you in the showcase, they want to bring you around, but so many. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome. So even if you're not in the top 10 or 15, you still would have all this exposure where they, you know, obviously they're going to need more 10 or 15 people so they can. But that's the thing. It's not even competition. Like if you make that 12 or that 16, like, all you want like we all want like we're in it like the scene is not like a competition we get to the top one you know right, who's right. One. It's literally like these 16 
actors are being highlighted. So literally ABC oh, is like, yeah. we're going to groom you. We're going to train you. I mean, we went through a gruesome training process. Um, I mean, workshops that really push you, help you really understand who you are, understand your brand even more, understand what gotcha. you you know, so we learned so much. And so, you know, I, I had got that, uh, that opportunity in July and they've been training us all the way through like last week, <laughs> you know, so it finally the showcases tomorrow. Um, it, it's, it's an industry only event. So, you know, so they only have the executives casting the yeah. who um, they invite to see it, but because it's virtual now that LA executives and and uh, casting directors, they're all watching it now, too. So they're saying this is going to be the biggest one yet because it's virtual. That sounds stressful. Yeah. <laughs> it was stressful for them because if this was their first time having to do it virtual. Like ABC, the ABC executive, this, they had to figure it out, too. So this yeah. was a learning yeah. curve for them, too. I mean, and they worked out. We got a chance to preview it uh, yesterday because um, what happened was ABC had to send us film equipment and everything. So we had to film from our own homes. Oh, wow. And then the editors were able to edit it and make it look like we we're all in the same place, all types of things like that. Um, but it, 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 they really had to figure it out and they had to do it fast. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I didn't even know that existed. You uh, you have to watch that stress. You'll end up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> My wife keeps saying, Mark, you should go. She keeps telling me I should go ahead and just, I'm like, nah, not yet. No, yeah. no, no. Hang on to it as long as you can. I'm trying my best, man. <laughs> I, I miss the 80s. Oh, man. Back in the 80s, I was like, ah, oh, this hair is just driving me crazy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> long hair. That's right. And then now it's gone. Now I just all I want is for it to come back. <laughs> it's a hard to no, make. That's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, back in you know, the, the 80s, it was all feathered. You know, I had it feathered, you know. <laughs> Down to the shoulders. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Worst yeah. hairstyles ever. <laughs> but everybody had them. So it wasn't like you were it was the you thing know, that, unique. Mm -hmm. It was just the thing. No, that's a, a good luck on that because that's uh, that's amazing. That sounds that sounds stressful to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still it's such an honor because again, you know, to be chosen by ABC executives. Yeah. Pass these major shows every single day as one of the 16 actors out of 15,000. You know, it, it just really, I mean, it really was a bless is a blessing, you know, to 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 have this opportunity. Um, so I'm anxious to see what comes of it. You know, the, yeah. the alumni who came from uh the ABC showcase, you know, actually this is their 15 year anniversary and they showed us this video yesterday of some of the alumni. I mean, you're looking at Chad uh Bozeman, you're looking at, you know, uh Lupita, you're looking at um uh, Laz Alonso, so many other people too, but it's just like wow. You know, all these names that we like, wow, these are like A-list actors, people yeah. who are all-time series regulars. They went through this showcase. This showcase is what exposed them to other executives and stuff. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. We're, go we're going to see you all over the place. And thank you. That's that's the that's the goal, man. That's the plan. Maybe, maybe <laughs> next time another interview, if we talk about my series regular role or something. Well, I mean, think you, you were so good just on your own. And now you've got all this behind you. And all this, uh, the training and everything, I mean, you're going to be unstoppable. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, I, so, so Mark, uh, this, this has been wonderful. I thank you so much for, uh, for giving me some, some time, but before I let you go, you know, is there, do you have anything upcoming that we can keep an eye out for? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my next project coming out is going to be the available wife. It's going to come out on the streaming network, UMC. Uh, that was direct. I saw the preview for that. Yeah, so that's coming out, man. Good. Uh, I got to see it do at the Black Film Festival um, earlier this year. So it's a really good movie. A lot of good surprises in it. It's a very yeah. flashy movie, but very good storyline as well. You know, so I definitely encourage people to check it out um, on UMC. Yeah, no, that's that sounds uh, great. And when's that coming out? Uh, December seventeenth. Oh yeah, so soon. So we got yeah. that one coming soon. Uh, what's your what's your role in that? So I play an executive of a multi-million dollar music label. Uh, so the main character uh, played by KJ Smith, you know, she basically runs and owns this company and I end up being her executive. So, you know, I do the day-to-day -day operations. I help her scout clients and talent. Oh, nice. You know, so I got to learn that side of music a little bit, you know. So it was fun playing that role. Um, you know, it was a couple of days of filming and, you know, it was just good to work with KJ Smith, Terrell. Yeah. Um, and a few other people. 
as well. Yeah, it looked like a good cast, and and the uh, the preview was uh, was amazing. Um, yeah, when I watched that, I was like, yeah, I got <laughs> I got to let my wife know about this one because she yeah, take it out, take one. it out. Yeah. <laughs> it moves fast. It moves fast. That's good. You know, right now everybody's looking for stuff to watch. Yeah, you know, it's been a rough year. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Me and my wife, we try to find something all the time. When we went in one series, we're like, all right, what's the next? We need something else. What's the next? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh every you know, everybody in the family is constantly trading, you know, what are you watching? What was good? What'd you like? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, uh, Mark, thank you so much. Um, one last thing before you go. Um, you know, where can our our viewers, our, our listeners, where can they find you um, on social media? Absolutely. I'm on Instagram um, at the Mark McKinnon. I'm also on Twitter, same thing at the Mark McKinnon. And I'm on Facebook, Mark McKinnon. You know, so you can check out <laughs> on those, you can follow my journey at the markmckinnon.com, which is my yeah. website. And hopefully you see me on another show soon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job on the website, by the way. That, that, oh, that thank you. Really good. Yeah. I built it myself. Uh, I yeah, mean, well, you yeah. did good. You did. You. You'll have something to fall back on if if all this doesn't go. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go that far. I don't love it that much. I don't love it that much. So, yeah. uh, just, yeah. All right, Mark. Well, thank you so much. And and uh, hang on one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna put us on pause. So that was the talented Mark McKinnon. What a terrific guy. I you know it was uh, uh, and I, I talked about it a little bit, but it was such a nice surprise to, when I was going through my research. And I was like, I've seen him in this. I've seen him in this. And and not only have I seen him, I really liked him. And, uh, you know, thanks to, uh, to Emily for uh, uh, making me sit down and watch uh, uh, The Waiting Room because that was just that was amazing. He was so good in that. So that was, that was a good one. That was a good one. I really, uh, really appreciated Mark. Uh, coming on the show and it sounds like he's going to be uh you know he's just touching the tip of the iceberg on uh, on what his career is going to become so he's got big things coming looking forward to seeing uh, where that goes and just just a a nice guy even if he was born or, or grew up in maryland you know i'm a i'm a wvu fan so maryland we talked a little off air maryland's a big rival but we'll forgive that and duke i don't know about this you know I think he said he came from New York to Maryland and then became a Duke fan because he was watching it on TV. So I don't know about that, but, but we'll forgive him for it. We'll forgive him for it. Uh, thank you, Mark, uh, again, for coming on the show. Thank you, everyone, for, for listening. Really appreciate the, that you keep coming back to us week after week. We don't take that for granted. Um, if you would, do us a favor, go to uh, YouTube, MeisterCon Pod, subscribe. You know, we, uh, we try to release two to three uh, interviews plus another episode every week. So there's tons of content on there. Really would uh, appreciate the uh, support. You can find us on Facebook under MeisterCon. You can check out our brand new website, MeisterCon.com. There's a, there's a blog on there from, uh, from Brett uh, that is just terrific. He's such a good writer. It's a lot of fun. You can find all our episodes, both, both uh, um, visual and audio, both on the website. So check that out. Um, if you would like to help, we talked a little bit about uh, our podcast studio. We're in the final stages of putting that together. Uh, if you would like to help, we would appreciate that. You can go to patreon.com slash MeisterCon. We'll give you some free content, um, some early access for your trouble. So I think that's it. That's a lot. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll talk to you guys real soon. And make sure that you check out uh, The Available Wife uh, on December the 17th. Bye, everybody. <laughs>